Hey, welcome to Color Up. There's something that craps players do that they should never ever do. Matter of fact, I've been guilty of this in the past and have probably even shown it in some of my videos. So what do craps players do that they shouldn't do? We'll stick around and find out. Let me back up and give a little context. For those of you that don't know, if you make a pass line bet or let's say a come bet, those are contract bets, which means whenever they move to their numbers, let's say this one's an eight and this is a five, those can never be removed. You can't take them down. And those are the only bets and craps that can't be taken down. So why doesn't the casino allow you to remove a pass line bet? Well, for the come out roll, you have the advantage. You have eight ways to win the six ways to roll a seven, two ways to roll 11 versus the two, three, and 12, which are losers. So that's uh, one, two, three, four combinations to lose. So you have a two to one advantage, eight ways to win, four ways to lose. So the player has the big advantage. Now, once a point is established, the odds flip in the casino's flavor because there's more ways to roll a seven than any other number. So on the six, we're at a five to six disadvantage. There's six ways to roll a seven, only five ways to roll a six. So we're now at the disadvantage. So because we have the advantage on the come out, the casino wants their chance to win back their money. So if you took your chance on the come out, you're a two to one favorite and a point came out and then you were allowed to remove it. Every time you bet, you would be a two to one, you know, um, favorite and the casino just couldn't make money that way. So they reverse the odds and then now they have the advantage and a chance to win back their money. So that's why you can't remove a pass line bet or, you know, the similar combat. So now let's get to the point of this video. What if you're a don't pass player or a don't come player? On the come out roll, you have a large disadvantage. There are, again, the 7-Eleven is gonna be a loser, so you're, you have eight ways to lose, and it's bar the 12, so you don't get to win on the 12, you get to win on the two and three. So you have three ways to win and eight ways to lose. So this is a huge advantage during that very first roll for the casino, but, once there's a point established, let's say it's a five, now the player's at the advantage because the seven is a winner for our don't pass player. So there's six ways to roll a seven, there's only four ways to roll a five. So we're now six to four favorites to win our bet. So the casino allows you, if you'd like, to remove your don't pass bet. They'd be happy to. They would like you to only play the come out roll when they have the advantage. They don't want you to stick around afterwards because now you have the advantage. So that's the reason that casinos will gladly let you remove your don't pass or your don't come bet after the come out roll. Now there is one caveat and one time that you cannot remove the don't pass bet and that is if you're the shooter. See whenever you're the shooter of the dice you have to have a bet on either the pass or the don't pass. So if you're shooting the dice and you have a don't pass bet you can't then remove it because you don't have any money in action. So if you're rolling the dice you have to have money in action. So in that case you would have to keep your don't pass bet up. So what do players do that they should never ever do? Well, that's called no action or remove their don't pass or don't come bet. You should never remove those bets. Well, you might say, well, what if I'm a don't pass player and the point becomes a six or eight? I don't like those odds. There's only five ways to roll a six or an eight. Let's say we're on the eight. There's five ways to roll an eight and there's six ways to roll a seven. The casino has a pretty good chance that we're gonna roll the eight and I'm gonna lose my bet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove it. I'm fine if it's the four or 10 because we know we have that two to advantage, two to one advantage. And even the five and nine, we have an advantage. You know, I feel pretty comfortable with the five and nine being my point as a don't pass player. But the six and eight, oh, no way. It's, it's too close to an even game. Well, yes, that is true. But the fact is you've got past the hard part. You've got past the big advantage on the come out roll and now you have an advantage. Yeah, sure, you might think it's slight, but you do have the advantage. But I have a better solution for you. If you get a point of eight and you don't like the point of eight, make a place bet for an equivalent amount. So let's say we have 25 on the don't, let's make a place bet of $24. We are now in a cannot lose position. We didn't go through the come out roll for nothing. We didn't take that big a disadvantage roll for nothing. Now we're gonna win some money. Well, what happens if we roll a seven? If we roll a seven, yes, we lose our $24 place bet, but we win $25 on our don't pass bet. We've netted $1, okay? So what's the only other outcome? The only other outcome is we roll an eight, okay? We roll an eight, 
we lose our don't pass bet, but our $24 place bet, that's gonna win $28. We've now netted $4. So if you don't like a number, just make an equivalent place bet. You're, you're either gonna break even or you're gonna win a couple bucks. It's a lot better than going through the don't pass again, having that big disadvantage and hoping to get a better number. Let's take a look at a $5 player and a $10 player. It's a little different here. Now the point becomes a six. Now we know a player should always bet the six and eight in increments of $6 when making place bets, right? So let's say this player bets $6 and this player has two units, so he needs to bet $12, right? If the six rolls, this player is going to win $7 and lose five for a net of two. This player will win $14 minus 10 for a net of $4. But if the seven rolls, this player will lose $6 and only win back five, so he'll actually lose a dollar. And the same with this player, he'll win back 10, but he'll lose $12. Well, on the six and eight, you don't, and this is the only situation that I can think of that I would not maybe play the proper odds on a place bet, go ahead and play them flat. So now in this case, if a seven rolls, we lose our place, but we win it here. So we've broken even. The same with here. The six place bet would lose, we would break even. Okay, but we're not getting played our true place bet odds on this. Right, they would have to round down. So on a $5 bet, I think it pays like 580 or something like that. So they would round down and you would only win $5. But again, you've now broken even. A $10 place bet is like uh, at seven to six odds, I think it wins like 1160 or something. So they would, yeah, you wouldn't get your, you wouldn't get your 14 for 12, but you would, it would get rounded down to 11 for 10. So in this case, you could actually profit a dollar. Let's take a look at the five and nine. Five and nine is a little bit simpler. It doesn't really matter what you bet. Just place the equivalent bet on as a place bet. So let's say we have a $10 player, $25 player, and the point becomes a nine. This player could just simply place the, the nine for 25 and the $10 player can place the nine for $10. Seven rolls, we lose our place bets, but you break even on the don't pass. If the nine rolls, we lose here, but this $25 will get paid $35. This $10 will get paid $14. We're in pretty good shape. So the bottom line is, if you don't like a number and you're playing the don'ts, whether it's a five, six, eight, or nine, don't remove it, don't call no action. Go ahead and make an equivalent place bet. So let's go ahead and do a little live roll and let me show you how this works in action. All right, we got a $200 bankroll. And for the purpose of this video, we're gonna assume that he's not the shooter. So we're gonna assume someone else is shooting. And so we're gonna make a $10 don't pass bet. And let's see what happens. Okay, eight, eight hard. So we're gonna mark the eight, but we as a don't player don't like the eight. Well, no big deal, we've gotten past the hard part. Just make an equivalent place bet on the eight. Now we're in a can't lose situation where either, and we're gonna break even or we're gonna win $1 if the eight rolls. Now we're gonna play like a three point molly don't. So let's go ahead and get a don't come working for us. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, it's gonna be a 12, 12 craps. Doesn't affect this bet. The don't come could be a winner, but we the casino bars the 12, so nothing happens. All right, we've got a 10. So this don't is gonna move behind the 10. And we have a two to one advantage, so maybe we, we're gonna let it ride. We feel like, you know, we're not too scared of the 10 rolling. We have that two to one advantage. And maybe you add on odds. For the purpose of this video, I'm not gonna add on odds to complicate things. I'm just gonna keep it real simple. But let's go ahead and get another don't come number. Here we go. And it's gonna be a six. This will travel to the six. And again, we don't like the six, no problem. Just make an equivalent place bet on the six. All right, here we go. We've got our three points and now we'll just see what happens. Okay, there's the seven, it's a quick seven. So what's gonna happen? We're gonna lose our six and the eight. The six, and the 10 is gonna come down, we're gonna get paid one to one there, and also our don't pass is a winner. Pretty good, okay? Puck's gonna come off, we're gonna have a new shooter. 
Let's go ahead and get in the don't pass again. New shooter coming out. Here we go. And the point is going to be a five. Now for some players that might be a tough decision and they, they'll just let the five ride or maybe they don't like the five. In our case, we don't like the five. We're only going to play the four and 10. We only like that two to one advantage. So we're going to make an equivalent place bet on the five. Let's make a don't come bet and try to get another. Okay, it's, okay, we hit that five. We lose our don't, but our place bet wins $14. Puck comes off, this comes behind the five. Now you could pull down your place bet if you'd like, but we have a don't here and it's gonna be in action, so we'll just go ahead and leave it up. Matter of fact, for the come out roll, let's get this thing working just in case. Go ahead and rack this up. And it's gonna be a new come out roll. We've only got one number. So let's go ahead and get a don't pass and try to get a second number. Uh, yeah, here we go, same shooter coming out. And it's gonna be a nine. The new point's gonna be a nine. Again, we don't like the five and nine. No problem, we'll just make a place bet on the nine. Now we've got two numbers that are basically in a stalemate. And let's get our don't come. So this, we don't need, really need a marker because the game is in action. Place bets are in action, I should say. All right, here we go. Okay, there's an eight. This don't come is gonna move behind the eight. We don't like the eight, no big deal. Make an equivalent place bet on the eight. And let's see what happens. We'll stop there, we got three numbers working. 12, 12 craps, that doesn't really affect anything. Okay, and there's the seven, seven out. We lose all of our place bets. These don't come bets come down, they get paid, and our don't pass get paid. So basically we break even. No harm, no foul. New shooter. Let's go ahead and get our don't pass down. Let's see what happens. Okay, five, point's gonna be five. Remember, we don't like the five, so we'll just place bet the five. Let's go ahead and get another don't come. And okay, we came right back on that five. We lose our don't pass. Our don't come moves up behind the five. And our place bet five, $10, wins 14. Buck's gonna come off. Go ahead and rack that up. And we'll go ahead and turn this place five on for the new come out roll. We've only got one number, so we'll go ahead and try to get a second one. Here we go. And we've got a three, three craps. That's great for us. It's just an automatic winner on the don't. So we'll just rack that up. Coming out again. And seven on the come out. So that's a loss for us on the don't. It's a loss for our place bet. Our come is gonna come down and we'll get paid one to one. Go ahead and rack that up. We'll go ahead and get down in the don't for same shooter, still looking for a point. And it's gonna be a 10. My dice rolled there, but it's a 10. We like that number, so we're just gonna let it ride. Let's go ahead and try to get another one. And it's gonna be a five. So this will travel behind the five. We don't like the five. We'll go ahead and place the five. And do we have enough? I'll just end it there. I just got some ones, $10 and ones. We'll just play it out with these two numbers and see what happens. Okay, and we've got a seven, seven out. We lose our place bet. This five comes down and gets paid. And then our don't pass gets paid because we rolled seven for the 10. So I hope that helped you understand a little better why it's always a bad idea to call no action when you're playing the don'ts. It just doesn't make sense. Just make an equivalent place bet and at worst case you'll break even. Remember, you have the advantage after the come out roll. During the come out roll, that's where all the that's where all the problem is, where you run into the trouble. So once you've beaten the casino for that first roll, 
don't pull your bet down and go back through it and give that casino that eight to three advantage again. Just don't do it. Don't call no action, make an equipment place bet, and you'll be a lot smarter of a craps player. I hope this helped you out. If there's something that I missed or there's a scenario that I didn't think of, let me know down in the comments. And until next time, good luck on coloring up.